Hello, my name is Mary Beth Coleman. I'm an associate professor at the University of Tennessee. I was a special ed teacher for 13 years in Georgia. And um, in this time of turmoil, when teachers are scrambling to try to find activities that kids can do online, or parents uh, potentially need activities for their children to do independently or a little bit independently, um, I was trying to think of how can I contribute? Maybe what can I do to help? So um, I'm going to show how to use PowerPoint to make some activities that can be used for, I mean, you can use the things I'm going to show to make very simple activities uh, all the way up to really complex activities. Disclaimer, this is not a professional video. This is me pretending like I am teaching my students. So I have set this up pretty much like I would if I were teaching this in class. All right, so again, using PowerPoint to create activities for P12 students. So what I'm going to show, really nothing that I'm showing is very hard. Um, you can make complicated activities by combining features and sounds, but you can also make simple activities very quickly that, um, you know, that can be fun and interactive for kids. So I will tell you when you are making this, of course, I have to say that you need to try to keep copyright laws in mind. I have found um, graphics and sounds that are under Creative Commons licensing. Um, and then also I have instructions for making PowerPoints they are, and using features in both Mac and PC. They are located on my old website. This page, is, the front pages are, are hidden and down for, for repair, but you can still get to this page. To be honest with you, you can use the link that's here or the way I find it, I Google MBC PowerPoint UTK and um, you should be able to find it that way. I have put a copy of this folder in um, a OneDrive folder. I'm, I'm sorry, a copy of this PowerPoint in the OneDrive folder. I put the entire PowerPoint. That way you can go in and look at the features, the animation features that are built into it if you want to replicate anything that's in there. And then I do have accessibility built into the PowerPoint. Um, this was a little strange because it wasn't meant to just be played. So the way I have added some of the, the accessibility features is a little different than I normally would have. For example, for narrations that I pre-recorded that are, or that, um, that I, yes, that I pre-recorded and put in the slides, instead of adding, the video is going to have captioning when I post it. But um, to, for those little clips, I couldn't, I needed to add um, captions in another way. So what I did was I added audio descriptions in the alt text box for the speaker icons. So that would be how you would go and find out what the narration says on a little speaker icon. All right, let me get rolling. I love PowerPoint because you can do a lot of stuff with it, limitless ideas, wide availability. Um, I've had, um, I've made or I've had students make activities for like cause and effect for kids with really intensive needs or little kids who are really learning at that cause and effect kind of level. You can put a picture and sound in PowerPoint. They can just use the space bar as a switch and go through cause and effect kinds of things. But you can get really creative and really fancy um, with it also. So social stories, accessible books, I'll show you how to do that. Um, academics, functional academics, um, making, doing like functional skills. So I will show you one example of that. I have a current intern who is doing video prompting with a, a prompt per each step of a task analysis on a slide. So it makes it really easy, really accessible, and then students can go back and forth and watch the video again if they need to. So you can do a lot of things with PowerPoint. Um, if your student does not have full PowerPoint software, there are free apps and free players that will play PowerPoint presentations. You just have to be careful because some of those won't play all of the features. For example, if you put a PowerPoint with a lot of features into Google um, and create it and it goes into Google Slides, it won't play all of the features. So you just have to make sure you find something that will play everything. You also can download PowerPoint presentations as MP4 movies. Of course, interactivity becomes limited, but if you just wanted something to like, a book that would just be read to a student, you can do that. Now, this is not my idea, and I'll show you something with this in a second, but um, if you have Zoom capability where you can share controls with somebody else, theoretically, you could do an activity together with your student online using Zoom where they take control of your mouse cursor um, and interact with the PowerPoint activity. I haven't tried that, but in theory, that would work and, and be a great solution when you are trying to teach via um, 
um, electronically trying to teach via Zoom. So, all right, so I'm gonna start with some simple tips, ideas, and effects. The first thing I wanna talk about, just because to get your um, graphics in the format where they will line up and then you can add animations to them, you, there are a few little tricks that you can use that help you do this easily. So I remember spending a long time years ago trying to line up things and make them all even and, and aligned. Well, there are features built in that do that stuff for you. So this is one of the first things that I wanted to show. For example, I have my apple and I have my worms that I've already acquired from the internet. I'll show you how to do that in a moment. So I've got, so it looks like I have one big worm there, but if I use the picture format tools and I go to the picture format menu and I click on arrange, now I'm gonna send my apple to the back. Oh, and you can see that it's not one big long worm. I have three worms. So that's a way if you are trying to move things and you want things to be partially in front of one another, that this is how you would achieve that. I am going to, um, now I'm going to bring my apple back up front. So if I keep clicking the wrong thing, there we go, apple. Uh, so bring it up front. Um, but now I still have this worm who is who would not come in front of the apple. So if I bring the worm up front, now I can put that in front of the apple. So that's just how you can arrange uh, graphics if you want things to like look like they're going in or out or in front of, uh, of each other when you're using animations. The other one other thing you can do that a lot of my students don't seem to know this trick when they get to me as college seniors. And you can do this in um, not just in PowerPoint, but in a variety of, of uh, products. But I'm going to just click on a worm and hold shift. Then if I go back to the picture format tools and go to arrange, now I can align those worms very easily all left. So they're now aligned all left. I'm using my friend C Command Z, which undoes or Control Z on a PC. Um, that's my best friend because I make mistakes and then I have to undo them. The other thing, so if let's say I wanted to, um, now I want to align all of my worms so that they are lined up at the top. And then I want to distribute them evenly horizontally. I would use that as well. So if you're doing like a letter sounds activity and you have a whole lot of letters on a slide that you want to animate and do different things with, you can use these features to make things align up really quickly. The other thing I wanted to say here is, I found out the hard way after a lot of trial and practice that um, if I want to make an activity and basically let's say I'm doing a letter sounds activity, I can make a slide, put animations on it for the letter A, copy that whole slide and paste it onto and then just change uh, into the PowerPoint and then just change letter A to letter B or whatever letter I'm doing and then redo the narration if I have narration on it. But that's just a really, that's a shortcut that it took me a minute to figure out, oh yes, why don't I just copy and paste? So I'm gonna show you two things, actually one thing that you can do and two examples of it to um, where you're not putting the PowerPoint into play mode, but you are using it in design mode. And this would allow a student to be able to move things around on the screen. And again, this is like this is, idea came from um, UT doctoral student and ETSU clinical instructor Jennifer Cook. So uh, this was her great idea. Um, so that if you let's say you have a game and you wanted to go on Zoom and play a game with your student and let the student take control of the cursor and move the little um, game icon around. Well, if you have the game board as a graphic in there, well, then the student might be moving the game board around. One way that you can achieve this easily is by changing, uh, by, by putting the um, graphic into the slide master. Now, I don't like a boring PowerPoint, so I always, for class, make my own um, templates by using the slide master. And if I click here, this is how you get to it. Uh, I'm, I'm, this is how you, um, I'll talk. It, in order to do this though, I'm already in a presentation where I have slides that have a different slide master. Well, if I change the slide master and I put something in the background, it's gonna change it for every slide in the PowerPoint. To not have that happen, I can go to design, select a different design only for this slide, and you'll see the screenshot here that shows you how to do that. Once you select and change the design for that one, now you can change the slide master for that slide and it won't change everything else. So I have already done that piece of it. And I have pasted my game board now 
obviously you will make something that looks nice. I did this in about a minute just for the purpose of this activity. So I have that as an image. And so I, I'm going to copy, I'm going to actually cut it and then I'll paste it. So I'm going to have it now copied. It's on my clipboard. I'm going to open the slide master. So view slide master. Now, once I get here, you can see I have this, I have several slide masters. So I have several slides with different background designs on them in this presentation, but I'm working right now with this one. So I'm going to paste my game board onto the slide master, close the master, come back here. And now you see if I'm clicking and dragging, this is now in the background and the kid cannot move that graphic around. So if I wanted to play a game, insert shape, insert a little circle. This could be anything you want it to be. So a little animal that would walk around the game that the kid can mani manipulate and um, go around with it. Now I can move that around and I don't have to worry about picking up the game board and moving it. Another example of that for this slide on, on, on slide 10, the, I have the white boxes pasted in the background so that now I could do a sorting activity. Um, I have some instructions in here, so uh, let's listen. Slide living things into the box on the left and non-living things into the box on the right. All right, so now I have, I pasted in a whole lot of images and this, the child can slide things into the, cat, the uh, boxes based on the category. And you'll see if I go to the um, slide viewer on the left and insert a new slide, you can see what this is what the master looks like. So you can see that I have the white um, boxes in the background. Same with this one, if I go, because these have two different slide, two different designs, and so I have two different slide masters that I'm working from. So from this one, if I insert a new slide, you can see that it puts the game board on the background. So that's a way that you can do interactive activities, not in play mode, but in just when the PowerPoint is, in, uh, the uh, slideshow is in design mode. Everything else I'm going to show you would have to be used in play mode. So I'll show you how to put features in to make interactive activities in um, design mode. So the first thing I'll show, this is very easy, is inserting a video. And this is a link to a video on my personal Facebook, um, sorry, not Facebook, on my personal um, um, YouTube channel. So I could also though go straight to a video that I have on my computer and upload the file. So to, to insert, pictures, graphics, audio, you click on insert. In this situation, I want a video, so I'm going to click on the video tab. And again, this is where I could, if I have it on my computer, I can get it, but I'm going to do an online movie, paste the link, and then click insert. And now you will see a video of my husband and dogs on the beach several years ago. Um, that would be embedded into the PowerPoint. So now I can I hit play. All right. The um, when you have media that you have imported into your slideshow, if you click on the, the I want it to stop. If you click on it, so I have the video highlighted in the top menu. Now you will see the video playback options. So you can decide if it starts when the slide starts. You can set it up to pause to wait a few seconds before it comes in you can have it fade in so you can control the the media from those playback features at the top menu there the other thing um, that i'll show you now is how to insert pictures and sounds and um and then how to do just very uh, like a very simple animation so i am i have already downloaded a cow sound from a website that has free animal sound the link is at the bottom here so I'm going to um, insert the audio for that. Uh, whoops, audio from a file. And I have it in my downloads folder. All right, so now I have that in my uh, slideshow. So um, now I wanna get a picture of a cow. So I'm going to go to insert, pictures, online picture and this could be something from your computer but i'm going to go out to the web i'm going to search for cow now notice it has a check for creative commons licensing so i want to find things that are not um you know that i feel fairly confident are not covered that i'm not going to be violating copyright law when i pull them in click there all right so now bring my cow down I'm resize the cow and then I'm going to actually just separate the, the 
attribution from the uh, cow. Okay, so I'm going to add a fly-in feature. So I want the cow to appear as if it's coming in from the right side of the screen and walking over to the left. So I want it to, I'm going to put it where it will end up when it gets into the slide. So I click on the cow and then I go to the top menu and go to animations. I'm going to open the animations pane because this is where you can control sounds and um, I'll show you that in just a second where you can control when it starts, how long it lasts, all of those kinds of things. So I have my cow highlighted and then I'm going to choose an entrance effect. So on PC, these look a little bit different. Everything looks a little different, but, but they, real all, they all function basically the same way. I'm going to open the um, fly-in or the entrance features and the one I want is fly-in. Now I don't want my, my cow to fly in from the bottom because that would be kind of silly. So I am going to use the uh, animations tab on the right, the animations pane on the right, and choose the animations option. So this is the effect options, and I want the cow to come in from the right. Uh, I don't need to change anything else there, so I'll just minimize that. I don't want it to fly in really fast because cows probably don't move very fast. I'm going to select very slow. I could slow that down if I want to have it, um, you know, if I want to go, I don't know, I'll, uh, much longer and take the cow uh, to uh, have the cow come in much more slowly. I can also delay if I want it to wait a second before the cow comes in. I think that's all I need for for this with the exception of I, when the slide starts playing I want the sound to happen and I want the cow to start coming in. So I'm going to click on the sound and notice it says on click so that uh, that could be I could just wait until the, the mouse is clicked or the space bar is pressed but I want it to happen immediately. So I'm going to go to with previous, and then I'm going to click on the, the uh, cow, the um, animation controls for my cow, and I want it to start with previous. And now I'm going to test it to make sure it works. All right, so that's very simplistic, but that's how easily you can add activities and add animations into the, the slideshow. This is an example of an academic activity. This came out of a um, word family activity that I uh, made a few years back. It. H says So in front of the word it, it makes the word it. And then there were other slides that had like a, a batter hitting a ball and that kind of thing. So to achieve that uh, was super easy. I just have two different text boxes. With, the, with pretty large letters. And I have, um, I'm gonna undo, undo. Oh, whoops, whoop, whoop, sorry, there we go. Now, uh, so now that they're back and they are aligned. All right, so I'm gonna select the H and I'm going to have it fly in. I'm going to select the text box for the IT and have it fly in. Now those I also want to fly in from the other side of the screen. So I'm going to, make that fly in, uh, I'm sorry, I want fly in from the right. And I'm going to have the word family, the rhyme fly in from the right. Now uh, these, I, I probably do want these to fly in fast and I want them to fly in on click. The reason I have that is because I'm gonna record narration so that when I'm recording the narration, I will click the space bar or the mouse button to start the animation so it will happen when I want it to happen. Um, I'm, let me demonstrate that for you. So uh, to record narration for an entire slide, there you click on slideshow at the top, and then I'm going to click on record slideshow. And when that happens, I'm going to start speaking. Now, when I make activities for kids, I always put in a text box that says what I'm going to say on the slide, and then I take that back out, but I put it in there so that I can remember what I want to, I want the, the slide to say. All right, so um, I'm going to record narration and I'm going to hit the space bar to make the H fly in, and then I will hit the space bar to make the I and T fly in. It, H says, so in front of the word it, it makes the word hit. Now you see that it says the total time for your slideshow was uh, 23 seconds, or yeah, I guess that's part of. So um, the, if you, that's called timing. 
So if you look up here, there is a the checkbox for use timing and not use timing. For this slide, I want to use the timings. I want those to happen when the student's watching it. I don't want them to have to control the space bar to make the I and the T fly in. So I, I have saved the timings for this slide. Later on, I'm gonna tell you to turn them off for a book, for example, so that the student would have to change the page. All right, so let's test this out. Each step. You can get the idea that the narration and then the, uh, the um, animation happens along with the narration. That was not a very well practiced um, explanation of it, but hopefully you got the point. This is just another example for an adult. This was an adult student in our future program who was learning how to use the copy machine. So this again just has some fly in features and narration. So I have to click to start it. Enter your copier code by pressing one, two, three, four on the keypad. So you can do more difficult tasks. You can do um, very simple tasks. And this was very easy narration. So again, just fly in features and narration added there. I want to show you how to combine effects. So here's an example of some, I have music playing that I downloaded from um, just like I did with the cow and Im imported it here. And then I've added two different effects that will happen together. So watch this. Okay, and I set it to not be as <laughs> quite as slow as I really would just for the sake of time. So you'll see that I have the sound in the animation pane and then I have the two uh, picture effects in the animation pane. So what I've done to accomplish two effects happening together, I am clicking on the ballerina. I go to, um, I'm gonna go up here to animations. Now the first effect that I used for her was swivel. So she's going to swivel into the slide and I find that in, in the, um, this left panel over here and there's swivel. So she will start swiveling. The other thing that I want to do is add a motion path for her. So I'm going to find path animation. For this one, I used loops, but I could have her do circles or whatever I wanted to do. In this situation, the default went the way I didn't want it to. So I'm just gonna grab that little motion path and then I can change the motion path to however I want it. So I can make it um, larger, I can stretch it out, I can move it up, you know, Top, higher on the slide. So if I just played this now, because I have, um, this is the way they came in by default, the two animations, it would do one on click, and then it's gonna do the other. So for, um, but now what I want to do is I want them to happen together. So for the first one, this is the um, coming in and swiveling. For the timing, I want it to happen on click. So I'm gonna wait until, for this instance, until the student clicks and then the then it, she would start moving. So I want it to be slow though. So I'm gonna go down to five seconds or I could make it longer. I could make it maybe 10 seconds. And then um, that one I want to start on click, so I'm good to go. Now I click on the other feature. This one is also on click, so I had to click it to make it happen. Now I'm going to select uh, with previous, so they will happen together. I need to change the time to make sure that this also is happening with the same amount of time. And now if I play the slide, I'll click and she starts spinning and she's moving and spinning. All right, so that's how you can combine features to get different effects. Here's an example of that where I've used um, fly-in, you know, some entrance features and um, some uh, different, just an animation and then a, a custom motion path. With this one, um, you will see that um, the, I have unchecked the timings, hopefully. For this one, I'm going to turn off use timings because I, I want the child to have to click the space bar in this one and you'll see that act in the activity. Letter W says, Whoa. William the Wacky Wonder Worm wants you to click the space bar, then trace your finger on the screen while he wiggles on the W. Whoa. Wow. 
All right, so there's an example of something that you could do that has several different combinations. Uh, I mean, you have a combination of several different animations and some um, narration that I, that I have inserted. All right, now let me show you how to do books. So you can adapt books for kids with disabilities. Um, or if you're using non-copyrighted uh, materials, you can just put books into a PowerPoint. Now, for physical access, literally, you could just copy and paste the pages into the book, and then the student would be able to, once the, the um, slideshow is in play, the student can use the space bar to change pages in a book. So this is a text that I got from um, a Beatrix Potter book that I just got from Project Gutenberg, gutenberg.org. That's one of the many sources of free text that um, you can find on the internet. This is a great site, I love it. Um, so that's an example of physical access, just paste the picture in the book, and that's all you have to do. For visual access, here's an example of how you can make an accessible book. The, um, I've taken this page also from Project Gutenberg, and um, from old Mother Goose's old nursery rhymes. Well, the, the contrast is terrible. The, um, the text is small and italicized and um, you know, with that, that contrasting the tan background, it's hard to see. The picture's pretty cluttered and hard to see. So I just did some little things. So here I've taken the text out. I've added a text box with yellow font. I've added the, a black background. So just go to format background and I have now changed the background. Instead of being white, I changed it to black for this slide. Um, I cut part of the picture out and then blew it up so that it would be visually easier to see. This is still not a terrific picture for vision, um, but it is a little bit easier to see the people in this, um, in this versus the, the previous picture. So you can, you know, change, the backlighting will help visually a little bit anyway for, for some kids with low vision, but, um, bringing it larger um, you know, might help most of all. So that's just a way that you can change and make a book that has for, um, visual access. For reading access, you can add another animation feature called brush color. And this gives the appearance that words are being highlighted while they are read. My example, when I'm in Zoom for some reason, it's not aligned very well. So I'm going to show you the slide, but then, and I'll show you how to do it, but um, it, it's not, the timings are off a little bit here. Once upon a time, there were three little kittens, and their names were Mittens, Tom Kitten, and Moppet. So it, the, it wasn't aligned um, really well. So when you do this, you have to put the feature in first, then you have to record narrations on top of it and try to match your voice up to the timing for the, the text. So it takes a little bit of practice, and um, sometimes you have to re-record several times to get it right. Here's how you do that. So I am now on the page that has the text, and, and um, so I'm going to highlight that text box, go to animations in my animations tab, and I'm going to go to emphasis effects and select brush color. So you're going to see that it, it's going to brush color in um, one letter at a time. It goes in really fast, and that's really not great for a text. You, that, that doesn't help you. So, um, and also on PC, um, some PCs by default are going to brush color across the box and not highlight the text. So there's a little checkbox in there that you have to find to change that, that setting if your brush color isn't working correctly. All right, so I now, I don't want that to come in that fast. So if I come over to effect options, I'm gonna change that and make it a different color. I want it to come in with purple instead of orange. For timing, when you're doing a book and you want the text to start being read as soon as the page opens or flips to this slide, you want it to start with previous. So I'm going to click with previous. Now for text, this is where you really will have to just play around. Um, I want to say I, I put this for 11 seconds last time and that seems to be a pretty good speed, but what you want it to be a nice comfortable pace for you to read along with the words as they come in or as they, the color changes. On a PC, this also is different. So on PC, when you're doing these timings, you won't have the seconds that you can adjust in the same way, but um, to slow the text down, there is a feature in there, if you click, that you can insert a little bit of a pause between words. So I usually put anywhere from four to 7% delay between words, and that helps slow it down so that, that it is a better pace. So I think my timing is okay. I might have to come back and play with that, but what I'm going to do is come down to text animations. 
So for text animations, you see the default is by letter. Well, I don't want it to come in by letter. That won't help me for looking like it's um, the words are being highlighted. I'm going to click here and go to by word. Now I'm going to test this and see how it, uh, if it looks like it's at a good pace. That's okay, it might be a little slow and it really would just depend on the, the um, child if you, you know, who you're making the book for. But I think, I think it's pretty good. So I have my animation and um, it, the text highlighting is there. Now what I would do is go back and record. So I'll go to slideshow. Now, oh, one other thing that I, that I recommend when you're doing a book is do a, like a half a second delay just because then you're ready to start doing the text when the, uh, the highlighting starts. So I'm just putting a little half second delay in and I still probably will not do a good job of recording it while I'm demonstrating this. So I'm gonna hit record and then the text is going to start brushing on and I'm going to try to read right along with it so that it lines up. Once upon a time, there were three little kittens and their names were Mittens, Tom Kitten, and Moppet. All right, so now you see that it came up and, and it's given me the total time for the slideshow. I'm going to click yes. And it brings me back to this view every time. Now, for the, actually, because I turned timings off for that other slide, it's not on now. The one thing, if you use plate, uh, if you're doing a book and you keep that little box check for use timings, the pages will automatically change. The slide is just going to change as you record um, and do that. So if you want the student to be able to have to switch, like hit the um, mouse button or the um, space bar to have to change the page, then you don't want the timings in because then they have to interact with it. So that's how you can um, do what looks like the um, highlighting in a book. All right, the next thing I'm going to show is how to do hyperlinks for response so that the PowerPoint will work, the slideshow will work interactively and the kid can like make choices, for example. So I'm gonna put it in play and demonstrate this for you. So if the student is trying to answer a question, click on the planet that is closest to the sun in our solar system and clicks on Earth. Oh no, the Earth is not closest to the sun. Click the back arrow and try again. So I'm gonna click the arrow. What about Venus? Oh no, not Venus. Click the back arrow. Let me see Mercury. Oh yes, Mercury is the closest to the sun. Um, I have another example with just text. So if you're doing some kind of uh, higher, um, like high school something and the kids are reading it and they need to make their choices, then if I click the, the uh, hyperlink to the wrong answer choice, that's not right, try again, click on the back button. Or if I click the correct choice, correct, great job. So the way you achieve this is by inserting hyperlinks and having it hyperlinked to different slides in the document. Let me show you how to do that. So if I click on, I just have four text boxes in here, but you can hyperlink items, text, uh, just highlight a text or a text box, and that's what I'm doing in this situation. So I'm just going to click on the text box and right click, or on my Mac, I'm going to two finger click, go to hyperlink. Now. You can have it linked to a website or an email address, but what I want to do is collect, uh, is have it go to a different place in this document. For this, in, for this example, I have already set up a no, that's not right page, and I've set up a yeah, that's correct page. So I'm going to, when I start to insert my hyperlink, and I go to slide titles, the slide with the, um, the no, that's not correct is slide 36 and I click OK, and then I would do that for the other wrong answer choices, and then for the correct answer choice, hyperlink, slide title, and I need to go to slide 37. And then one other thing that I didn't, uh, that I forgot to do when I was trying to do this before, I forgot to go in and insert this one. So for the uh, select the back arrow to try again, now I need to link this back to the page with the question on it. So I'm going to insert my hyperlink, and that needs to go back to slide number 35. So you could do like a scavenger hunt, and the kid has to like hunt around in the PowerPoint by clicking on answers to something, uh, you know, I don't know, academic questions or, or something along those lines. So let's test it out. Which box is pink? Nope, not right. Let's go back. And yes, that's correct. 
So again, you could, you could do all kinds of cool things with this by uh, having, like I said, linking to different places in the PowerPoint so that the student has to, um, you know, go different places or they just get, you know, some feedback for responding to some kind of question. I'm just going to show you a few other examples and then you will be able to go in and look at the animations if you download the PowerPoint from the, um, the OneDrive where I stored it. Um, and these are silly little examples of just a few things you can do to combine effects for um, different things you want it to do. So this is surfing away and I just have the things getting smaller and on a motion path going up to the right. Here's an example of pouring coffee. Now, I didn't do a lot of editing of the, of the uh, pictures, so you're going to see some white space. It doesn't totally look like it, but if you really want to do some photo editing, you can make it look super cool, but the coffee pot tips, the coffee comes out, and the coffee stops as the, the pot tips back up. Um, and this was achieved with a couple of different effects spin for the pot and then um, a white in feature for the coffee and then a white out feature um, for the coffee so it looks like it goes so this next one this is a this is an activity that was created by a former doctoral student dr jason gordon um, for algebra so you'll see how that operates with and he has several animations put in here three plus something equals seven four Three plus four equals seven. And again, you can go into the animation pane and look at the different animations that he put in and the different timings that he set up to have all of that happen in that way. Uh, the last thing that I wanted to say is just, if you wanted to have uh, record your slideshow, there's a feature with a pin annotation. So when you are in record mode, and I have a screenshot of that here, you can use this pin. So if you wanted to demonstrate um, how to do a really complicated math problem. That would not be me, and that's why you have a very simple math problem on this slide. Um, but you would be able to like demonstrate how to do something by using the pen, um, you know, while you're recording the, the slideshow for your students. I hope this helped, um, and I've said students throughout, but parents, if I'm sorry uh, if, if um, I was talking to teachers, but you certainly could make activities for your child at home too. If you have questions, and um, feel free to, to email me. I'm happy to answer questions. I hope you um, stay safe and stay well.